Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. And I hope you enjoy this new show, whether you're viewing it on the internet or listening to a podcast version of the episode. I do want to thank you for being part of my audience. You can also find links to videos or podcasts on MiamiGhostChronicles.com as well as where you can submit your story about any eerie experiences you've had, which I would love to hear about. Just go to the Submit Your Story tab. Please subscribe to our channel so that you receive notification of when we release a new show. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is where I usually live stream and where I give you a behind-the-scenes look at locations where new episodes are being filmed at, I also tell you about all the interesting guests that will be appearing soon on Stories of the Supernatural. I hope you enjoy the show, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi everybody, it's Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I've got my, you know, my birds, I've got my cockatiels out there, and I've got some... Some babies that just came out, and man, they're driving me crazy. All they want is food, and hoping this doesn't carry out. But you guys are used to it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, in case you hear any weird screeching, no, it's nothing paranormal, supernatural, nothing like that. It's just my cockatiels. Hello. But anyway, guys, let me tell you about who I've got here today. I've got a gentleman by the name of Josh Hurd. Now, Josh is an author, a speaker a filmmaker and host of the Conversations in the Dark and the Ectoplasm Show. And ever since he was young, he had an interest for all things paranormal. And it wasn't until he was in college and found a group of like-minded people that he began to investigate the things that go bump in the night. Now, he had a terrifying experience which inspired him to write his first book entitled When Ghost Hunting Goes Wrong, A Brush With Evil. And we're going to be... talking about that most definitely now he went on to write many more books on the topic of the paranormal and he went on to produce and direct two feature length films as well as many other documentaries he's also the co-owner of malvern manor in malvern iowa and where he gives tours does historical research and puts on events so let me bring him on how are you doing today josh i'm doing great thanks for having me no on the contrary it is my pleasure well josh you know, even though your bio, it says that you had an interest since you were young. I'm still going to ask you, I ask everybody, <laughs> did you have an experience or what was it that prompted you to go into the paranormal even now as an adult? What happened? Yeah, I did. Um, it, it's interesting how it all kind of, you know, falls into place. And I, I've completely stopped believing in coincidence. Um, uh-huh. And I think all of this is kind of like, meant to be uh in some very odd way but yeah so when i was like i remember like always getting books and things like that from the library um you know scary stories and all that fun stuff but it wasn't until i was like probably 11 12 years old okay um i had an uncle who was basically like my best friend in the whole world he passed away of aids and he was only 31 years old at the time uh, so, I mean, quite young. Mm-hmm. This was a big shock to the family, sure. um, blah, blah, blah. But there were some very odd things that were going on, you know, kind of surrounding his death. And the first one that I always tell people is, like, you know, his his dying moment. Um, it, it was interesting. Like, he passed away in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, so obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't present for that. But my grandfather, his father, was. Um, and so, you know, Grandpa was kind of sitting around the table um, just a couple of days after his passing and kind of telling us this story of what happened. And apparently, uh, my uncle had woken up and um, kind of sat up in bed, and everybody just kind of rushed around him. Um, everybody knew this was the final stages of, of AIDS. We knew what was happening, you know, what right. was about to come, go, uh, go down. Okay. But uh, it was interesting because apparently my uncle Todd looked past everybody, like everybody that was around his bed. It was almost like as if he was acknowledging something 
that wasn't privy to everyone else in that room. Wow. Um, and he let out, like, he had this very big smile on his face. Um, and then he closed his eyes, and he quite literally expired right then and there. It was almost like he saw something, right. um, knew exactly what was about to happen, um, and then passed away. Um, very interesting, you know, these, these deathbed-type uh, stories that we hear um, and there are thousands of them out there. And yes, but it wasn't until when my grandfather was telling us all this story, um, we we're all sitting around this dining room table and he was telling this story and it was right then like this old toy radio comes tumbling down the stairs um, and into the room right where we were sitting slides onto the floor and it starts playing the song somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, um, which is so interesting because it's like that was number one. That was like one of Uncle Todd's favorite songs ever. Number two, that was one of the songs that was played at uh, his funeral service at UCLA. Um, wow. Very, very, very interesting. Um, but that moment right there for me, like everybody around that table was just completely stunned. Everybody looked at one another. We all kind of like smiled in this shocked way nobody said a word but everybody just lost it we all knew it was like him you know just coming and saying everything's okay guys i'm still here but you know i'm not right. here but i am here um very interesting to me so that was my moment right there that was right. it for me that was when i started you know <laughs> 11 years old which is kind of odd to think about you know diving yeah. into the works of parapsychology and you know, uh, Hans Holzer and Ed and Lorraine Warren and reading all of these case files on anything to do with the paranormal. Like, I was absolutely obsessed, um, probably to an unhealthy degree. <laughs> now I'm in the <laughs> <special> sector. <laughs> well, but, yeah, so, I mean, that was my moment for me. That's very understandable, though, because, and and this is what I tell everybody as far as, you know, paranormal investigations or even if you're not investigating, let's say a lot of people have experiences, before, you know, when they're kids or young, not because they're doing this, but there's something that happens to you when you have that firsthand experience where everything yeah. kind of shifts, your reality shifts for you because you realize, right. okay, I, you know, you can't explain it, you know, you, you know, right. like what you just described that happened with your uncle was is so significant, you couldn't really interpret it any other way except that this was... Right him saying I'm okay like you said and for you I imagine as a kid I, I would probably be impressed and I don't blame you that you were like I need to learn more about this yeah exactly because like that was that was for me knowing <clears throat> that there is something else beyond what we know there is something else that we cannot quite fathom yet um, but you know, our life or whatever, something does go on, right. something transfers forward. Um, it was just, uh, again, it was, it was terrifying. It was heartbreaking and it, it was fascinating all at the exact same time. Right. One I of the things that. you I imagine is that also when you start reading, you realize there's other people that have had very similar experiences that you're yeah, like, I understand. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. And that was that was one thing that I, you know, going into this more and more and like, um, you know, when when Steve Jobs passed away, mm -hmm. um, he had a very similar experience. Apparently, he had sat up in his bed and he just kept saying, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like he was looking around the room like, oh, my gosh. Wow. And then he passed away. It's like, what the hell are you seeing? Like, what are you looking at? Well, what can't we exactly see? I love it. And um I had a paranormal investigator here that her, she does, she's a hospice nurse, you know, you know how these investigators, oh, wow, yeah. have the, the, and she told me, she goes, Marlene, I've, you know, I've had some patients that sometimes I've had them for a couple of years. I've been working with them or, you know, treating them. She goes, and I already know when they're going to pass. I said, how do you know that? She goes, yeah. because since I'm familiar with them, they will start talking to or about seeing relatives that have passed away. And she says, because it's I am amazing. familiar with them and the family up to point, I know that sure. who they're talking about is a deceased person. And she says, and sure wow. enough, she says, once I see this happen with them, 
I know that's going to be very soon that they're going to be passing away. Very similar to what you described. Just it's just nobody sees it except them. And usually it's very joyful. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you and, see, and it's, it's things like that that make me believe that, yes, something does continue on. Now, I mean, of course, modern science or what have you, you know, is going to try to explain everything oh. away. Well, and that's fine and dandy. You know, I mean, that's its purpose. We need to debunk and all this stuff. So they'll tell us that, you know, oh, it's it's brain, you know, right, right. It's, it's mis, misfiring or what yeah, have you. you that know, if, right. That, 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 and I know quite connecting. that they've done these tests, you know, where they, if they press, like if they say they open your skull and they press certain parts of your brain, it, it yeah, gives you yeah. the same, um, it reproduces that near death experience. But at the same exactly. time, they say they've they've had people with near death experiences. How do you account for them being able to tell what's going on in other rooms? They, they, know. they can't see over here. I don't care what part yeah. of your brain is being uh, affected. How would you know that? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. And I, it's I, things like that that keep this that keep this conversation and this narrative going. Is it's you know experiences like that. It's like how were you able to to see? what the doctors were saying, what they were doing mm -hmm. to you, like working on you on an operating table. What were, you know, it's yes, just amazing exactly. stuff. Or that your family is in the, in the hallway or in a waiting room far right. off, you know, where you possibly couldn't even overhear what's being said. Um, <laughs> right. And you're able to describe the conversations that took place. Yeah, you know, so, and, and I think a lot I of, it. a lot of doctors, and I've come or run across this, nurses are more open about it. A lot of doctors, you know, because they're still, I want to say, yeah. they kind of have a little bit of stigma attached to anybody talking about that. But if you catch them in a moment by themselves, like off the record kind of yeah. thing, they will admit they've had experiences with patients with things that they can't account for, either near death or people when they're about to die, uh, that right. they themselves will be like, yeah, I'm not going to talk about this in front of the other doctors, but... You know, it's, it's things like that that fascinate me, too, because even here at uh, Malvern Manor, mm -hmm. um, we have a ton of people, like doctors especially, that will come in here because they are so curious right. uh, about the, the afterlife because they've had similar experiences with patients, you know. Um, now, obviously, they're always like, well, I was never here. You know? Right, <laughs> but, right. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I know. That. But, yeah. <laughs> They think it, they think it would be like career suicide or whatever. Right? But, yeah, uh, it's like yeah, my my, my my wife or my husband, whoever forced me to take this tour. Darn it. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I yes, I know exactly. Well, uh, because I've seen that that yeah, even though it's gotten a lot better, um, you know, oh, because yeah. when you see work like Dr. Moody's, well, well, he was like the one that first started doing that near death experience um, book and things, but still, there's a lot of like the naysayers and i think sometimes those are the sure. ones that most want to be convinced uh yeah absolutely yeah they're, they're they're the ones that i uh they're the ones that i buddy up next to on an investigation you yeah. know yeah. <laughs> because when they get that I moment wanna... it's yep. like <laughs> i want to experience it with them <laughs> of course of course and now let me ask you, you okay so you went on you, you did what i think it's so many of us do which is you start off as a kid you read all these books and like you said back then it was only hans holzer you know and you know it wasn't like it is now yeah. and then know, what right? happened you started a group uh after you got older you started yeah. a ghost hunting group yeah so it wasn't until i yeah i was in college then okay that uh, i found all these people that had similar questions, uh, had a lot of very similar experiences, like when they were younger. Mm -hmm. um, and we all decided, hey, we should try to, you know, pursue this in some way, shape or form, investigate this. Okay. Um, and, you know, at, at that time, um, this really cool show called Ghost Hunters just hit the airwaves, right? Yes, and I remember when that came out. And it was uh, it was interesting because I was like, wow, you know, these these dudes are, are plumbers and right. they have an interest in the paranormal, but they are actively pursuing um, what we can't answer. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed that. I'm like, so, you know, we, we watched like four episodes of Ghost Hunters and by God, we knew everything there was to know. Yeah, about, it's like, yeah. You know? <laughs> I know. I know. I remember those first shows. It was like, hey, everyday yes. Joes that are plumbers by day and by night. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, so enthralled with all of this. And so 
we go out to this place. Of course, you know, around Halloween time is when mm-hmm. um, uh, the, these haunted places get the most press. And yeah. being in this college town that we were in in northwest Missouri, uh, there was this place. It's called Workman's Chapel. And if you look at Workman's Chapel, okay. it looks it resembles like a barn. It looks like an old rundown barn. So you have a very wide opening in the front. Okay. You have three windows on either side, and you have two windows in the back. And it is just a single room. That's it. Um, but they they ran the story on Workman's Chapel, and I was like, guys, we need we need to cruise out there. Uh-huh. Um, the first the first three nights. We were hearing footsteps. We were hearing knocking and things of that nature. But, I mean, we weren't really spooked or anything like that. Nothing to really write home about, so to speak. But then the fourth consecutive night that we were out there, for whatever reason, the fourth night seems to kind of be the charm. Um, We were out there, and we had not even set foot inside of this chapel. It was a very brightly lit night as far as the moonlight was concerned. You can see through the structure, you can see the haze of the town in the background. And um, there are holes. And, I mean, the place is literally falling apart. Okay. And on this particular night, you could not see inside of this chapel. You could not see through it. You couldn't even see two inches inside, um, which obviously was something that ghost hunters hadn't covered yet. So (laughs) I was completely dumbfounded, Uh right, by all of this. Now, I'm, I'm looking in, and I'm like, guys, something doesn't feel right. Now, I am about as psychic as a blade of grass, okay? I'm not <laughs> at all. And so I uh, – but I did have a weird feeling about this. And I'm okay. just like, you know, nothing is really sitting right about this. And so I said, why don't we just kind of take this experience, commit it to memory, um, and call it a night. Um, and that was that. And my friend Tiffany – was crouched down, similar to like a catcher in baseball. She was looking very intense inside the chapel. And like she she was commenting on the fact, I can't believe how black it is. And she no more than got that sentence out of her mouth before she was struck by something, um, a force of some sort that quite literally – if you, if you imagine yourself sitting in a chair and your legs extending out from you and your right. arms extending out, like you're making a 90-degree angle with your body. Okay. And she's flying backwards through the air, two to three feet probably. Uh, she lands on her butt. Okay. She does two backward somersaults and lies face down in the gravel. Um, like this was very, very forceful, whatever I this was, was. You must have all been <clears throat> like what? absolutely shocked we grabbed her we drug her to the car everybody basically like like i said we hadn't even set foot inside that chapel okay we took off we headed back to campus now i will say this tiffany was a straight a student um of everybody in that group probably the strongest in faith out of all of us okay um i will say she had a very very bubbly and and, uh, just a great, amazing person. Okay. Um, She did not leave her dorm room for an entire week. She never ate a single meal. Um, There was a lot of things just completely out of character with her. Now, ultimately, this whole thing, you know, took the, the work of a priest to rectify this situation. It was absolutely horrible. Um, But that was, you know, it was that experience with her and, you know, that really set me on a completely different path as far as the paranormal was concerned. Now, I will say that after all of that happened and she was better and yada, yada, right. I, I switched colleges. I went to a college here in Iowa. Okay. Very similar situation. I started a group, uh, a group of buddies, and I was telling them the story, basically of what I just told you. And um, they obviously were like, "Dude, we want to go." And I'm like, "No, <laughs> I, I, think, I think you missed. Yeah, like I think you missed the point of <laughs> yeah. the story, right?" So like, and they're like, "No, we want to check it out." And I'm like, "Well, peer pressure being what it is, um, you know, obviously I agreed." And it was 
almost identical type of situation. So the first three nights, nothing. The fourth night, the fourth consecutive night that we're down there, again, we experienced the blackness. Now, this oh. time, obviously, we didn't, we didn't leave. Okay. Um, but we did decide, and this is also kind of like uh, set the standard for me as well, even to this day of how I investigate. I want to push it as far as I can because I feel that the concrete answers that we are searching for lie just beyond our comfort zone, right? So sure. I want to push it as, as much as I possibly can um, to see what happens. So we decide as a group we're going to push it, and we are going to go inside of this chapel oh, one yeah. at a time. Oh. <laughs> isolation, right? Okay. Complete isolation. Now, the rest of us would be outside of this chapel. We would be able to, you know, hear everything that's going on because we certainly could not see what the heck was going on. Now, now I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to ask you something real quick, Josh. Was yeah, it all yeah, guys? Yeah. Was this all guys or did you have any girls in there? This particular time was all all guys. That's what I thought. Okay, um, keep going. <laughs> yep, yep. This particular time was all guys. Otherwise, you are absolutely correct. There would be a voice of reason exactly. in there somewhere. <laughs> Some girl would have said, "Are you crazy? What are you doing? Didn't yeah, you hear exactly. the story he said well, earlier?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I that's would exactly totally agree with that. <laughs> okay, so every okay, oh. you you everybody was gonna be. It was like a test of courage. Next, you go in Basically, there now. Basically, yes, exactly. Oh so I'll do just 10 minutes, 10 minutes by yourself, whatever. And really, you know, we're hearing things, sure. Now, we're hearing what sounds like pacing, footsteps, heavy footfalls on oh, wood boy. planks. Um, and it sounds almost like boots, like cowboy boots, right? And it's right. very loud pacing. Um, and it would stop and turn. And, I mean, it was very bizarre. At one point, it sounded like log chain being pulled Around the chapel, it sounded like uh, floorboards were being ripped up, wow. um, but nothing. I mean, those really loud snapping sounds of wood. Okay. Nothing was out of place, you know. Um, very interesting. So, my friend Blake is the last to go. Now, my friend Blake is military man. Um, okay. Absolutely zero BS. Always has been. Okay. Um, but regardless, um, Blake's the last one to cruise in there. Blake, thank God, is hand, holding a, uh, a digital recorder, or excuse okay. me, it was a it was one of those mini cassette type yes. of recorders. I know which one you're talking. Um, so about. he's holding that, and uh, he's not asking questions. He just has it rolling, basically. <laughs> but you're hearing all this stuff go down, and then you hear Blake say, "I want to leave," um, and that you hear, obviously nobody heard this at the time, but it was a, what we consider an EVP um, on this recorder, and it just says, you're dead. Oh, um, what? Did, was, he, did he hear it, was, it or nobody? No, he, he did not. Nobody <laughs> heard it. It was very interesting. Now, you hear one footstep, uh, one footstep basically heading towards the door, and that's Blake wanting to just leave, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so his intention is to walk out of this building. Right. Uh, and then you hear a very nasty sound. You hear what sounds like a whoosh, like a very loud, violent whoosh. You hear a god-awful choking sound. And the sound is actually my friend Blake being pulled out the window directly behind him by his hoodie. What? He's being basically choked. Now, I'm telling you. It was almost as if it was like a Hollywood style. Like, this was bad news. Um, so, ultimately, you know, Blake was fine, thank God. Now, um, he had some cuts and some scrapes, obviously, but other than that, he was fine. Now, mentally, we're all screwed um, because it's you know, that's the moment for me that it's like that's what still wakes me up in the middle of the night. You know, three times, four times a week, I will wake up screaming. Because it's like, okay, uh, this one, even if I yeah. wanted, how do you explain that? There is no way to explain exactly. it. Exactly. It was stupid. It was one of those things where you're questioning literally your own sanity because you can't believe what is going on. You're dumbfounded. You're completely just lost. Um, now, obviously, we got in the car. We 
got the hell out of there. Yeah, <laughs> what, I was gonna... what we ended up doing. But that was it for me. That's what inspired me to, to write the book when Ghost Hunting Goes Wrong, right? Uh, and it's what... basically just... Who it's was the first one that heard that tape recording? Was it you, Josh? Were you the one that... That was... Yes. It was... Actually, it was me and my buddy Nate uh, were listening to this the following morning. Um, we got up and we just started listening to everything because we're like, what the heck happened last night? You know, what was that? You know, we're trying to make sense of everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, very interesting stuff. We heard that and then obviously had to replay it over and over and over again um that is stupid, astounding. but that's what yeah but i mean like for for just therapy and therapeutic reasons like i had to write this book i'm not a writer right. like at all it. i'm not <laughs> and, it like, but i i felt like i just needed to push it out there right well then we got um some people, uh, some buddies from California who happen to be filmmakers. Okay. They're like, we should turn this into a documentary film. And I'm like, ah, I okay. don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. And so they're like, well, if it was your documentary, what would you do? I'm like, well, here's the deal. I would retell the book, right? I would retell the story. Okay. I go, but then maybe I would take it a few steps farther. And I would get that team, that last group of guys together. And we would go back and we would stand up to this thing for one last time, four consecutive nights, just like before, actively pulling out all the stops and trying to elicit a response of some sort. But ultimately telling it, this is it for us, you know, screw you, F off, we're done, you know. Um, but, you know, that, that, that's ultimately what happened with the film, except... Obviously, again, like, I am such a butthead. I'm just realizing <laughs> this now. Like, I'm such an ass. But anyway, like, again, like, I have my buddies. And, again, I'm making them now do isolation sessions inside oh, of the Oh, my God. <laughs> now, we have every angle of this place completely wired with infrared cameras, digital recorders, you know, things of that nature. So we're going to hear every squeak and crack and everything. Uh -huh. But we're also going to be able to see our friends if they're in trouble. Right. Um, and be able to help them. So one hour per person alone inside one the chapel. One hour? Oh, one whole hour. Now, <laughs> oh. in this hour, they, they are not allowed to have a flashlight. They are not allowed uh, a cell phone. They're not allowed any form that of communication been one long whatsoever. Hour. It was terrible. Now, I was the first one to do it because everybody was like, you're out of your mind. And I'm like, well... I'll be the first to go, you know, like just to, to get the ball rolling here. <laughs> it and was ridiculous. Let Some me ask you something. Did you ever through, identify yeah. what was there? The did priest you? did. A what? The priest, the priest from when Tiffany was, was uh, in trouble. When I reached out to the priest, he was able to basically tell me, he goes, it's not a demon. Okay. Because as, as everybody's going to think, you know, it's, it's right. not something necessarily demonic. Is because it? However, what was it? Non-human or human? Non-human, okay. for sure. But it was what he he described it as an imp. As a what? Which is interesting, like an imp. Uh, okay. I -M -P, okay. I understand. Which is something that I hadn't I hadn't heard of. Yeah. Before. I have. Uh, but he, the way he described it was almost like a right-hand man to a demon. Yes. Just kind of a peon, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it was interesting to me. So he says, whatever it is is tied to the land. It is tied somehow to that location or the land okay. or the grounds or what have you. Okay. Now, there was a lot of things that were kind of shady that did happen back on that property. Okay. Uh, people were hung out there for, you know, uh, claims of witchcraft and things of that nature. Oh. Um, I'm telling you, like, the history is bizarre when you really dig into it. Oh. Um, now, obviously, you know, you look online and people will be like, oh, there was a, a pastor at one time who went crazy and he killed four members of the congregation okay. and then hung himself from the rafters. Yeah. I can't find that anywhere. Okay. And I'm something like, like that would have made the paper. So you, you would have found some type of... Very much so. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I can find the lynchings. I can find the hangings. I can find all of this other okay. nasty 
you know, it's kind of like humanity at its worst. Right. Um, and it definitely was alive and well. So on that what, what at some point, what, they just abandoned, abandoned it as yeah. a church and it just stood there? Yep, yep. So basically in the 1950s, it kind of fell into disuse, okay. right? Um, it was still used every once in a while, family gatherings and whatnot, you know, um, whatever. I mean, there's, there's a cemetery that's not even 10 feet away from the place, and it's a more of a family type cemetery. Mm-hmm. So they would still go out there. They would still have services every once in a while, funeral services right. uh, primarily. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically in the 50s is when it just stopped. Okay. Um, and just started to decay <laughs> into what right. it is now. So very interesting piece of property. But obviously now, you know, we, no matter how much I try, like that's the one location I always want to go back to, always. Um, but that's also the one location I can never allow myself to go back to. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm over it, you know. Um, but yeah. Pretty and interesting how location. Why, why, why do you say that? You think you were just lucky those couple of times and you're thinking, you know, one of these days I want to go back there. and. <clears throat> yeah, it's... yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> well, no, I mean, one of two things happens usually. One, I mean, obviously you had an, enough proof that something was horrible. Right. And based on what that priest told you, that's that's that right there is, uh, or did something ever start happening at your home? Because that's what a lot of people don't realize when you start getting involved in some of these things. That Right. And that's it. So as far as like that time period, you know, I was, I was in college and, you know, had the, the roommates and a collective floor of people. So there was always <laughs> stuff going on. So there okay, was, I know there where you're never, going with that. <laughs> yeah, so there was never um, like quiet time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. I know. You're okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. You're in free. college. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, very interesting stuff, though, for sure. But, I mean, ultimately, that's why I wanted to do then the, the book and the, and the film. And from that point on, like, I just got bit by a bug. And I was like, oh, God, I got to write more. Oh, God, I got to film more. Oh, God, I got to do all this mm-hmm. other crap. So, yeah. Very cool stuff. But though. you know what? I'm glad you you did, like you said, because, you know, I'm, I'm really big into research myself. And, you know, a, a lot of mm-hmm. times, a lot of these places, they get, you know, they get these reputations and a lot of these urban myths, right. which are like, like what you said, you know. But then when you really start doing the digging, there's more just really, truly disturbing stuff that did happen that you're like, who cares about the urban myth? The real stuff is horrible. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the real life story is even more terrifying right. than anything else. It's just bizarre to me how some of this stuff, you know, it's just like how word of mouth can just spread like sure. wildfire, you know, sure. it's amazing to me. Do you think that anybody, let's say after the, you know, the church wasn't there, obviously, or the, the it wasn't being a, the used as a church. Do you think anybody ever went in there? Because I know sometimes <clears throat> these become hot spots for people to do rituals yep. and stuff like that. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because, yeah, so that place did become kind of the place to go. Uh-huh. If you were if you were a high school student mm-hmm. and wanted to kind of escape reality for a while, you could yes. go out there, you could drink your beer, you could make out with your girlfriend or boyfriend, you could do, you know, smoke, whatever you wanted out there. Right. Um, and pretty much be left alone. Mm-hmm. Um pretty interesting but yeah a lot of stuff and i will say this like <clears throat> walking into the chapel uh especially in the film you'll notice it also that there is a very large um there's a very large circle on on the the ground or on the floor itself that had been spray painted on okay. there's some very weird archaic type symbols uh, around it um Mm. Kind of resembling a clock, but definitely nothing uh, numerical or anything that we would recognize as language or, or words. Um, right. But there was, it was interesting because then there was also like candles placed at these marks. Um, the, the point of this, like it had in the middle of the circle, it had this um, triangle. Okay. And then inside the triangle had uh, what we call the eye of providence or okay. the, you know, the all seeing eye or whatever. Right. Um, and it was pointing due north. So if somebody was practicing something yeah. out there. Yeah. And whoever was doing it had done their homework. I will say that. Um, mm-hmm. What it was that they were practicing, I don't quite know. Um, okay. I don't know if I want to know. But 
But well, yeah, interesting. Yeah. You know why I say that? Because everybody thinks, yeah, you know, like, oh, people going in there and doing rituals. and, But, you know, a lot of times these tip, these teenagers, not the ones not, that decide, oh, we're going to do something. They, you know, they get a hold of these right. books and they're going to summon something or invoke something. And everybody's, yep. every once in a while, they don't know what they're doing, but they actually do open a door where they do bring something through. Okay. Exactly. Unwittingly, exactly. they don't know what they're doing, and unfortunately, <clears throat> that's sometimes where you get a lot of these dark, very uh, non-human entities at certain locations like that, because you have somebody right. that's dabbling, and even dabblers sometimes just do the right thing. Yep. You know? Yeah, it could be completely, like, just sheer dumb luck. And yeah, they're, exactly, they're, exactly. They're doing it. Sheer luck, yep. and then, you know, anybody, but let me tell you something, because I was going to say, those two incidents that you described with your friends, that mm -hmm. yeah, you, uh, the my understanding is when you see something like that that has so much force to be able to do what you described, yes. you're talking usually Move a non-human entity. Yeah. Exactly, like absolutely terrifying. Um, it's it's almost like we have like this weird form of like paranormal PTSD, right? Yeah. So, Yes, I, mean, I understand it's, totally. It's something that you never, ever will forget. Um, yeah, terrible. Ultimately, terrible. Well, um, it, 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 but one of the, it, it, you know, and I tell her, you know, that's one of the things when you are into paranormal work, like I said, usually some groups, you know, after a little while, they, you, you, you know, they, if they gel and they stay together, I said, a good portion of your investigation sometimes are really boring. Either one doesn't there or two, it just doesn't, nothing happens. You know what I'm talking about. You're there and it's just right. like, okay, I'm going to fall asleep. And then you'll get maybe <laughs> a residual or an intelligent haunting. But then every once in a while you do stumble across something really dark and exactly. manipulative and malevolent. And, yeah. and I just think it was so stupid that it was basically, you know, like for all intents and purposes, like our first real investigation. And we stumble across something that's so rare and so nasty. Like, I don't, again, like, I don't know if it was something that was meant to happen. Like, like I don't right. really believe in the coincidence thing mm -hmm. anymore. Um, so it just kind of makes you wonder if I was just, like, destined to walk this path, right? It's of weird. Of course. Of course. And, and also, also, you know what? You could have had these experiences and you could have said, you know what? Screw the ghost hunting stuff. I yep, never exactly. want to do this again. That's yep. it. <laughs> and I've heard of people and that's happened so to people close. would be want to be ghost yeah. hunters. It's like, yeah, they had that and one I was experience so close to that point. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, nope. Now, like for Tiffany, for example, Tiffany, mm -hmm. um, that was absolutely her. She was 100 percent done. Oh, yeah. Everybody from that first group, 100 mm -hmm. percent denied uh, doing any or having any part of this film, they yeah. would not and did not want a thing to do with it. Yeah. Um, and I don't blame them. Sure. You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. When um, you're talking that you had to get it resolved by bringing in a priest right. and yeah, exactly. uh, everybody, uh, depending on their age, they had flashbacks of the exorcist, you know, because everybody goes in that direction always like, yeah. holy, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's it's sometimes it does happen. You come across things that are very dark. So you continued what you you continued on with your group and the documentaries. Yes. And yes. I see that you 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 also have the Malvern Manor, which is supposed to be haunted itself, right? Right. So the Malvern Manor, which is interesting in and of itself too. So when we were filming, okay, we were filming the first night of A Brush with Evil. Okay. And I was slated to be. Uh, at this really cool place uh, in Malvern, Iowa. It's called the Classic Cafe, and it has a slew of its own paranormal happenings and goings-on, and they were nice enough to say, come on in and investigate for the okay. purpose of your film. Um, I wanted to open up the film, basically, with a ghost hunt. This is who we are. This is kind of how we do it, um, a very broad-stroke version of an investigation okay. um, to kind of lead into everything. And obviously, when we got there, I didn't realize that there was a bar that's attached to the classic cafe. And so okay. with, with noise contamination and, and loud music, it. It, it was an impossibility. Yeah. It, yeah. So I walk outside 
I walk outside and I'm kind of smoking my angry cigarette is what I call it. And I, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to come up with plan B because for as far as I can see, night one of filming is completely screwed. Yeah. And I, uh, I met this guy who, Josh, if you can hear me, I cannot hear you. Oh, don't tell me that I lost you. Oh, thank God. Okay, I thought I had lost you. That was you. bizarre. It's, that was so bizarre. Isn't it? Isn't it? Okay. Oh, my God. Like, I'm standing inside the damn house right now. Like. <laughs> All right, here story. you go. Dun, 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 dun. Weird. Okay, go ahead. That yes. Oh, okay. There's, what so, what did you say about not yeah. believing in coincidences? Oh, don't tell me I lost you again. Oh crap. Here we go again, folks. You know, you know. Oh my god. I was gonna say here it's paranormal sabotage time. Oh okay. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, it's happening right now. Yes. But okay, so we're gonna Weird. that's it. White light. Okay. So you, you're here, like you said, having your angry cigarette thinking, that's it. What do I do now? Plan B is yeah. going to be. And I, and I meet this guy and he's like, oh, this is really cool what you guys are doing. I own a place that has some creepy things that go on. I'm like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, it's uh, he goes, this, the building itself is 10,000 square feet. Um, it used to be a hotel. He goes, then it was switched into like a nursing home type setting. And then from there uh, is more what we would consider a group home for, for mentally handicapped people. And he said, there's a lot of weird things that go on there. And I said, well, where is this place? And he goes, oh, it's just right across the street. And uh, I was absolutely blown away by that. Wow. Um, he was nice enough to let us in. So quite literally, it's of a brush with evil is us discovering this monstrosity of a building that we would very soon come to call Malvern Manor. Um, which then, again, coincidence or whatever would have it that this gentleman had to leave town. Uh, he got a new job offer and put the place up for sale. I was lucky enough to kind of swoop in, okay. and here I am. Like <laughs> I now own the wow. damn place. <laughs> Talk about, yeah, um, being at the right place at the right yeah. time. Exactly. Um, super bizarre. So there's all of that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and when, like I said, what, what happened when he, when you went there long, you know, obviously before you thought you were going to end up owning it, what was he describing right. that was happening there? Well, he had said that he had tried to live here uh, for six months. Okay. He had uh, lived inside of the structure for about six months. Couldn't really sleep. Um, very odd things were happening. It sounded like the place was basically like being ransacked is what it sounded wow. like. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, he did call the police, things of that nature. They had to come and, you know, check the building to make uh -huh. sure nothing was going on. Um, and nothing ever was. And nothing was ever out of place either. And from the sound of it, it sounded like windows should have been broken and, you know, right. things should have been all over the floor. Uh, but nothing was ever out of place. Yes. Things like that. That phenomenon that, is so common sometimes where people describe yeah, exactly that. Weird? And I hate it because it happens all the time here. Oh, well, um, and, and so you're still experiencing oh that, huh? Yes, absolutely. Especially up in the attic. Like whatever's up in the attic does not enjoy the company of people at all. <laughs> okay. um, and we'll absolutely let you know. Um, wow. Very interesting. So, yeah. What's, what's fascinating about this is then I start to try to put together this crossword puzzle, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a history major anyway. Okay. Um, so history and all that fun stuff, it fascinates me. Um, and being able to stand in a location where all this history went down is, again, you know, sure. just amazing. Sure. Um, so, like I said, it was, a, it was a hotel back in the late 1800s. This was pretty much the place to be in town. Okay. Um, Weddings have been held here. Funerals have been held here. They used to bring in once a month, um, like psychics, and they would do like these really? big group um, readings and things of that wow. nature. 
Um, doctors would come in and out of this place uh, on a, like a monthly basis to kind of check out whoever needed checked out. I mean, just amazing stuff. But we do know that then this place uh, in the 1950s became what we would consider like a nursing home. Okay. Um, in the nursing home or whatever, we know it did not last very long. In the 70s, the state of Iowa came in. They said, oh, your hallways aren't quite wide enough to properly transport patients. Um, okay. And so this is where it becomes the group home. Now, the group home is the most fascinating portion of history, in my opinion, just because the clientele. Okay. You have people here um, from the 70s all the way up until it closed um, in 2005, but you have a clientele of people with very common type diseases, people mm -hmm. um, like with Down syndrome, for example, okay. right? Um, you have people that were here with very classic cases of addiction, drugs, alcohol, things of okay. that nature. But then on the opposite side... I was going to say, that's a with, pretty wide swath of people. <laughs> right, right. But now, but now you have... Now you have people with multiple personalities, or DID, what? I believe is what they call it now. You have people with schizophrenia. You have people that have murdered others oh in my the past. God. This is a very odd population of people. Let me tell you something, though. That's together. like, that's the two extremes. I mean, what? Exactly. Very much so. You never hear of this, ever. And no. <laughs> it, it's just something that is so bizarre to me. But now, here's where it gets super weird. The place only closed in 2005 okay that's it wasn't that long ago no, and all no. of this was still happening like it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me wow so the clientele itself is is the most fascinating to me for sure, sure. but now ultimately this place was closed down it was shut down by the state and the reasons why is a laundry list of, okay. of reasons why the top of the list would be, include neglect and abuse. Um, right. There was a lot of things that did happen here that I don't necessarily like to talk about. I know a lot of people around town don't like to talk about, you know, okay. but it happened. It sure. happened. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. Um, yeah. I, exactly. And I totally understand that. That Yeah. Because of the population that it houses there. Some, a lot of times they're short yeah. on staff and the staff they do have is not the best. So, yeah. Exactly. As I, there's just so many different variables that mm -hmm. go into all of this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just interesting stuff. So yeah. This but that, place... that, that, that you're absolutely right. Considering still the original layer, I'm sure these last, what, 30 years or something <clears throat> that it was the group home. Yes. That's, yes. and it makes you wonder how much these people experienced and <clears throat> nobody would pay attention to them yeah. or poo pooed <laughs> them <laughs> because they right. were like. It's so, it's so funny because one of my first things of business, my first item of business basically as an owner mm -hmm. is I wanted to get some of the original staff members here. Okay. I wanted them to walk me through this building like okay. foot by foot and tell me whose room was this or what was right here or whatever happened here. Right. Just walk me down memory lane. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, and I'm yeah, sitting yeah. here taking notes and recording every second of this. Um, and trying to take it all in. And that was one of the first things I did. Now, here's where it gets fascinating, because I started to run into a couple snags. Um, I talked to a lot of people around town. Okay. And, uh, I worked here, and I was getting like 30 to 40 conflicting accounts of different things. Really? And it was so frustrating. Yes. Like, it was so frustrating to me. So I ended up hiring a private detective, um, <laughs> He did a three-week-long investigation. Okay. I am definitely in the wrong business. We spent stupid amounts of money on this man. Uh, <laughs> He's like, yo, I need to get my PI license. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's interesting because I instructed him. I'm like, I don't want to know a thing that you find until it's done. Okay. Um, I want you to dig up everything that you can, whether it be good, bad, or otherwise. I want to know as much as you could possibly get okay and he you know he agreed you know we still have blood stains up in the in the uh one of our hallways um wow and it's just like smeared all up and down the hallway everywhere and it's quite oh. blatantly obvious finger marks and and spit up and things like that now these are all things that i haven't touched 
<laughs> the building is exactly the way I found it. Okay. When I stumbled in here about four years ago. Okay. We haven't moved anything really. So, um, but it was pretty interesting some of the things that he was able to find. Um, so, so you were thinking report, after you interviewed all these people, you said, I know the <clears> truth <throat> is somewhere in the middle of all of these stories. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Somewhere in there. Exactly. Yeah, and so I used the stuff that could correlate. I used all the stuff that it was, you know, provable. I had okay. documentation coming out the yin yang. Now, obviously, I don't present the documentation because number one, it's a HIPAA violation, right? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this was. <clears throat> and let's face two, it. Number two, like I. These, yeah. These people yeah. are still but, alive. Some of them, I imagine. So. Exactly. Yes. And and a lot of these people like still have family that is very much sure. in this area and I don't want to step on their toes either. Sure. That's um, understandable. It's like, all I want to do is just record, observe and, and document as much as possible and try to, again, put together this puzzle, um, which has been just an amazing ride, you know, so far, but, but you, I don't see you know what, Josh? anytime you, soon. You brought up something really interesting. A lot of people think mm -hmm. because everybody hears about these abuse that, the aggressors are usually maybe, you know, you get some staff member. You'd be surprised. A lot right. of the violence comes from the people, the patients or the clients that are right. there, especially right. when you're talking about somebody who's got addiction problems or MPD, you yep. know, multiple personality and something triggers them. They can be really aggressive, yep. uh, like homicidal mm. in some instances. So, Very yeah, much so. That, I'm yeah, sure a lot of things went on there. Oh, there was, yeah, an absolute ton. Uh, now, when I give a tour over here, it usually takes about a half hour um, to get through the whole building and to, you know, tell some of the more significant stories and things like that. The things that I can prove, Right. Um, that's a big thing, too. Like, I, I don't want to present people with horse crap. Um, right. I don't, and I don't, I don't want to church it up. I want to present exactly what we know, and then I want sure. to see if they can come up with whatever they can come up with so it's been such a crazy ride though <laughs> well i imagine though that that place sounds like i mean even if you wouldn't have told me anything I, I i i could tell you that place must be a hotbed of activity okay just not For based sure. on it's not just based on the length of time that it's been there but number one it was a hotel yeah right i don't know what there is right. about hotels <laughs> I know it's something very weird and almost romantic about the idea of, of travel. Um, but people like you think of just the clientele coming and going yes. at all times for different forms of business, no matter what it was. But you know whatever. what? A but, lot yeah. of times everybody thinks sometimes hotels, like you said, travel, but there's a lot of people that would end up in hotels, but things were going on in their lives, which were kind of horrible. And you would think, well, Something happens to them. Why would they stay at the hotel? You'd be surprised. It's, people end up in hotels mm -hmm. sometimes for really disagreeable reasons. Yeah. Right. So it's super interesting. So I I've been uh, you know very good buddies with uh, Johnny Hauser from the Velisca Axe Murder House. Okay. Um, so him and I we we talk all the time, and you know the Velisca Axe Murders they happened in 1910. Okay. Um, obviously the murderer or whatever was never captured. We still have no idea who did this. Mm -hmm horrific crime but Velisca is only about 30 minutes away from here okay the only way to get would be through rail uh rail travel you know okay. um but at that time um it's you know very i don't know one of the main series is that the killer probably stayed in a hotel before coming to Velisca and oh. then doing the nasty deed it is bizarre. He's like, it's quite feasible that the yeah. killer stayed within these walls just a night or two before that happened. Sure. And I'm like, God, if we only had a ledger, you know, exactly of, because of people that stayed here, my God, could you imagine? Well, because <laughs> think about it. But you're talking 1910. I'm sure that yeah. these towns were like, it was like maybe what, maybe one of, if any other hotels in that area, let's say, for example, you know, it's not like a big city. There was. There was one other, but didn't come into existence until a few years later. Okay, but so yeah. there you go. The, the only place would have been your right. location. Ah, it's yeah, very Yeah, we're talking feasible. literally. This place was the uh, the fourth 
structure that was constructed within oh. this town. This is this building. Like, it was the place to be. Um, very interesting, though. Yes, that you know like, what that place, that that theory, know? that theory is very very plausible, uh, because you know, right. and and that's the thing that's always been about the that axe murder was it was a very small town, but nobody could account for yeah. what happened to the perpetrator. How could they so exactly. quick? Exactly. How could they do this? Yes, exactly. Go and, in and just brutally murder eight people yes. and then just get away scot-free. Right. Back, man. They, they had, I know they had a lot just of theories bizarre. and a lot of, you know, suspects mm-hmm. and everything, but at the end of the day, nobody. And, yes. uh, but so God, that, that's, that's, that's something to think about. But anyway, getting back to that, I know that this gotta be, first of all, it was a hotel. Then it was a nursing home. Yeah. Even though a nursing home, like you said, for a short period of time, I'm sure you might've had people that passed away there or lived there. And Very much so. Group home, <clears throat> same thing. I'm sure that there were people. This, you know, considering the yeah. the amount of years that it was open, people had to have lived and passed away, uh, and who thought Very of this so. place as their home. You know, this is yeah, and that's what lived. I keep coming back to. Right. Okay. Like there has to be, you know, like an antecedent for activity, right? There has yes. to be some form of antecedent or why something would happen. Yes. And the only thing that I can keep coming back to is what you just hit on. Like this place was home yes. no matter what. Like yes. no matter if you got along with a dude across the hall no. or not, you're still eating your dinner pretty yes. much the same time. You're getting yes. up at around the same time. You are interacting daily. Yes. Because it's a family at that point. Yes. Absolutely. You know, this was your home. Yeah. And God, I just got goosebumps just like. <laughs> right. Well, no, you know what? And the truth but is, all these it. places are run on schedule. So you're absolutely right. They probably had a time, yeah. you know, for this, for dinner, for lunch, for this. And like you said, I'm sure that there was conflict. But this was home. This is where exactly. they. Exactly. And let me ask you have you uh, had any residual um, experiences, like smells <laughs> or anything like that while you're there? <clears throat> the biggest residual mm-hmm. that is here. And. It, 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 it's so bizarre to me, um, but it, it's a phenomenon that we just call the shadow man. So the shadow man is all the way down in what we call the nursing home wing. This was the wing that was added onto this building in 1956 to accommodate this nursing home setting. Okay. Um, but we do know that that wing was also used during the, the group home um, as well. This gentleman uh, was a nonverbal patient he was six foot seven inches tall. He was uh, mentally deranged as hell. He had killed three people in the past. Like, this was a gentleman that they didn't even assist him putting on his shoes. Now, okay. what's interesting. Let me ask you, how did this guy, it, why wasn't he like in a hospital for the criminals? I know this is a stupid question, but what nope, was he doing there? Not. Because, exactly, because there were so many different cases here that I said, these Patients could have been better serviced elsewhere. Let me tell not you. saying anything bad necessarily about this facility here, but I am saying sure. that this is not the place for them at all. Um, super weird to me. Can but you now, imagine being the staff that had weird. to take deal with him? It'd be like, oh, your turn. Bingo. Oh, your turn. <laughs> they were no, but they were terrified. I bet. Absolutely terrified. Now, here's the phenomenon that we are experiencing. So, when people go back to the nursing home wing. They are usually sometimes greeted by a very tall black shadow figure that will emerge a room all the way down the hall. You have a good 40 feet all the way down the hall. Wow. And so <clears throat> now it's 40 feet on either side. So basically you're dealing with 80 you know, feet basically. Right. Um, but what they see is a very tall black humanoid figure come out of room number two. Okay. It will turn, and then it will charge at you. What? Now, in the distance, in the distance of this 40 feet, it is traveling in less than a second. It is moving that fast. People, this is obviously what is sending people out the door. I was about to say, you, oh, when you hear yes. them screaming coming out, you go, oh, I know what they saw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, bizarre. Now, Where it gets fascinating is we cannot, because it seems like nobody's getting, you know, nobody's getting hit or scratched or punched or any of that crap. Like, it's just bizarre. 
the second you flinch, it's over. It's done. Wow. And it is passed. Um, now, where it gets funny is the fact that when this gentleman who occupied room two was right. alive and well, okay, his little claim to fame is he would come out of that room whenever they were doing bed checks or rounds or what have you, he would come out of that room and chase who was ever doing the documenting. Oh, boy. I'm like, very interesting. We're seeing similar behaviors yes. with the shadow man as this gentleman's behavior yes. was in life. Yes. Um, kind of coincidence. <laughs> I don't know. What I do know is we, like that to me, seems very residual in nature. Here's the problem. We cannot pinpoint a, a specific time of day or night. What the hell was that? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <clears throat> but we can't pinpoint even a moon phase or a weather pattern or anything when this phenomenon is going down. It just happens, and it happens at all times. It doesn't seem to matter. Wow. Um, it's just interesting to me. Did you Very did you ever find out what became of him? Did <clears throat> did he die there? <laughs> Here's where it gets funny. So this gentleman one night decided it was a good idea. Remember, he's nonverbal. He cannot speak. Okay. Um so he can't tell you he's mad. He can just basically show you. <laughs> and he's yeah. upset. Um one night he thought it was a good idea. He waltzes down the hallway and he just walks right out the front door. What? He oh, walks, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Absolutely. He walks right out the front door. Now, obviously, staff saw this happen. They were trying to get him back into the facility. Um, they were not successful at all, and he was not compliant. So uh, protocol, protocol at that time would say you then call the police. So okay. the police were called. They came because this gentleman was at that point now, he was scaring the hell out of a lot of people around town, too. Okay. Um, so... At that point, it's, you know, it's crucial that he gets, you know, put somewhere. Um, right. So the police did come. They did, you know, quote, unquote, arrest him. Um, but they, they put him in the back of the vehicle. Now, they didn't bring him back here. Um, they took him to Omaha, Nebraska, which is just about 45 minutes away from here. Okay. Um, he was taken to another facility within 48 hours. Of being admitted into that locked facility, this gentleman had expired. He w had passed away. Um, wow. I don't understand the circumstances. Yep, and we don't have any record whatsoever of what officially happened to this gentleman. Now, he was only in his mid to late 40s. He was not an old gentleman at all. Right, exactly. Um, definitely too young to just be checking out, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so there's something odd going on with that. Um, so he did not die here, but he did die um, just two days after, you know, leaving here or walking right, out yeah. of here. So home is there. So, home was there. Home was right. there. Right. Again, yeah. That's just what I just keep coming back to. Yeah. He, it's just he, so amazing to me. That, wow, makes you wonder what happened to that guy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I mean, and it's like I have so many stories that are just like that, you know, <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, and it's like, again, like you hell? said, like, <laughs> and let's face it, you know, back when was this during the 50s or whatever, sometimes you went into some of these mental institutions when, and they right. something happened with certain, you know, especially if they didn't have any family, they, things happened and nobody was like, nobody's telling Oh, he died. Mm, too bad. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We had a lady that was admitted in here, and she was only in her 30s. You know, she was quite young. Okay. Um, but her husband, her husband was the one that admitted her because she had this thing going on where she said, my husband doesn't love me. He doesn't find me attractive, blah, 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 blah. Like, this became an obsession wow. for her. She was then admitted, you know, because he didn't know what to do anymore. Okay. He was completely, like, I don't even know what to do. Right. Um, he felt terrible about it. Okay. But, we do know that she would stand at her mirror in her bathroom and she would pluck the hair out of her head one by one by one. Wow. Um, and then, you know, she was medicated and then she was heavily medicated and she literally just deteriorated. I bet. Like it's such a sad story. Yes. It's so sad. Um, yes. But it's like, 
and we just have a ton of these. You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> I no, it sounds today. like based on what who you were telling me was admitted there, it's like you, you've got. Yeah. I'm sure you've got <laughs> phenomena going on there. It's like that's incredible. And it just doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter a time of day. It just happens, you know. So when when people come here to to have an overnight investigation, you know, it's it's ten thousand square feet. It's a lot of house, That's a lot. you know, to cover. Yes. Yeah, and you know, especially in just a night or whatever. So I mean, when people come here and they check in, they check in at four o'clock in the afternoon, and they have the place until noon the following day. You know, okay, so we give yeah. them twenty hours. That's a lot. To, to, yeah, I mean, they could even sleep if they wanted to, you know, or if they can. Yes. I mean, good luck to you, but I mean, you know, and but the you option th- is there. <laughs> what about what's up in the attic? Because you mentioned that, and that's intriguing. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's one of the ex-patients, <clears throat> or what's up there? I would say yes, but I call it almost like peacocking. Okay. Whoever is up there wants people to believe that it's more than okay. what it is. All right. Um, so we hear a lot of banging and scratching. And again, that gets sounds like, you know, the floorboards are being ripped up and things okay. are getting thrown and nothing's ever out of place. Okay. Um, what's interesting is like, I thought initially it was probably an animal because it's an old building. It's very okay. feasible, you know, an animal yeah. would be in there. That makes sense. I've been back in this weird little crawl space area that's back in there, which is where the majority of the activity comes from, the voices and the sounds so I've been back there now seven separate times, specifically looking for carcass or droppings or anything right. that would suggest something is or was alive. Uh-huh. The only things that I have found back in this little crawl space area are very personal items, like old keys, playing cards, crushed up packs of cigarettes, tobacco pouches, uh, cans of beer, things okay. of that nature. But nothing that would suggest um, an animal. Okay. Now, I will say this. Usually when people are up there, they're good for about 20 to 30 minutes before they begin uh, okay. to, to feel physically sick. Um, we've had plenty of people, you know, toss their cookies really? up there, which makes for a super fantastic day for me. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, it's like, please, where, where the first signs of... Yeah, it's so like, gross. So I was... I, it's I, so gross. So they... Wow, physical symptoms. That's incredible. Yes. Now, here's where it gets fascinating. This is why I say it's probably somebody because okay. this person will tell you to, you know, F off or leave or do right. whatever and get you okay. back down those stairs. But he will beg you for alcohol and cigarettes, which is like classic addictive behavior, yes. right? So yes. Yes. He's like, he wants to so up there in the attic. If you guys ever come and visit, like you will see. Yes. Uh, I have an entire collection of beer cans, whiskey bottles, cigarettes that I've left up there um, as more of a peace offering. Right? So let me. Like, so so in other words, that attic is one of those. Is it one of those attics where you can stand up in? As was it ever used as a living space, or was just as was it just know, always an attic? There is. We don't know. Okay. We don't know what the attic was ever used for. I will say there's paint, there's trim, there's baseboards, there's moldings. Okay. Um, so I would suggest it did have some form of purpose. Right. Okay. Um, just what that purpose was, we, we are unsure at this right. point. Beyond storing, you know, junk, which is what everybody usually sometimes does with their attics. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you're so short crazy. on space. <laughs> Yeah, Put them up there. throw it up there. Yeah, why not? Go up there. Go up there. <laughs> yeah, that 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 mean old codger drunk guy. Yeah, put him up there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and for all you know, or Love maybe it. maybe it could have been maybe they had a handyman that lived. You know, one of these guys that was like, "Yep, hey, he takes care of the place. He's a he keeps the stuff, but he's got a bad temper and he drinks. But okay, well, he lives there yes, on the ground. There you go." could be that. I mean, That's we, a great we could take that in, Absolutely. A, in a lot of different directions, but I'm sure so many personalities, so many things have gone through there um, right. Right. through the years. So, Josh, you, do you live close by? Have you ever had anything, I'm going to ask, follow you home? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird, but yeah, like, <clears throat> I mean, it does seem, and it's, it's become a constant lately, um, when people are here and sometimes they'll reach out to me 
And they'll be like, you know, things are going on here. I'm like, well, that's interesting because things are happening here at my own house as well. Pretty much in tandem, you know. Um, And I live about 10 minutes away. All right. Um, So not that far, but, you know, far enough. (laughs) Right. It's it's weird to me. Like how this can... uh, can kind of transfer, I guess. I don't know. Well, you're the guy Could in you charge. Just kind of follow us along. You're, right, you're, right. You're, you're the guy in charge, so. So I'm the guy. I'm the guy to mess with, is what yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or yeah. Back then, think about it. Uh, you know, they usually had yeah maybe staff that took care of them, but there was always that one person in charge, and you're yeah. it now. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a that that must kind be such bizarre. a fascinating place to visit. <laughs> It's truly it's fascinating. A lot of fun. I will say that. Well, it's it sounds like a lot of fun. you've got a lot of sources. If somebody's going in there to do an investigation as far as getting any type of evidence or capturing anything, I mean, if it's going right. to happen. And I know sometimes it's not an on demand thing. I, I understand the way supernatural works, but chances are in that, that tall guy shadow thing, what? Oh my God. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> no, no matter if, you know, if. And you know it's not going to hit you. You know it's not going to do anything, but it's something about, like, something so large and you know what? coming I'm, directly at you. I'm going to, because I, I went up to Rolling Hills Asylum up in, you know, in upstate New York. And, you know, they got yeah. their, their tall guy, but he was a nice tall guy. You know, he was a, just awesome. this poor kid that was dropped off, and he was really, really tall, and he's supposed to really seen, but he was Aww. a nice tall guy. Not like your guy. Your guy killed yeah, we people. Didn't. That puts we a whole need a different tall guy like on. that. <laughs> well, you know, the one up there, he was supposed to be really educated, and he was he was nor he was oh, normal wow. mentally. He was just had that giganticism, I guess, and his family dumped him there. Sure. But he was a oh. nice person when he was alive, and he's seen or they kind of see his shadow. But your tall guy, that that yeah, that uh, murdered people and chasing people around. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's just crazy. It's almost like it was a game, you know? Yeah, but I'm sure he got a kick out of scaring the poop out of Mm -hmm. the staff. Exactly. And that's what what I keep thinking, too. I'm like, what if this was just his game, you know? He's just like, "Ah, I'm going to do this. Because why not? I'm going to get a rise out of somebody. Um, They're going to show me some form of attention. Yes. Um, I mean, it's just, yeah. There's so many different possibilities here. And how about God. after hours, Josh? Do you ever have have you ever had calls or, or things people telling you that after you've closed down and you're not there that people have seen or heard stuff? Uh, yes, like it's so weird, um, especially up in the attic. Like we have some really cool people that live around here, and the town of Malvern is so supportive of what we're doing. Okay, um, it's it's such an amazing situation that we've been blessed with here seriously but i will have uh some of the neighbors sometimes they will text me or call me they're like hey like for example this happened just a few weeks ago (laughs) he calls and he goes hey pal i think you left the attic light on you know not a big deal just figured i'd let you know and i go oh wow thanks for that now i'm very meticulous Uh about things and i know for a fact that that light was off and then while in the conversation with him, he's like, yeah, I just thought I'd let you know. Oh, never mind. It just turned off. I there go, you go. What? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> and you're like. So weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I understand what you're thinking as far as I know I turn it off because the last thing I want to do is have to drive back to turn off a light. So I know oh, yeah. I turn Screw it that. off. Let it. Oh, yeah. Let it burn. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not well, doing that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's the guy up in the attic. That's that's and I you know and I love it when these places develop, they you have certain entities that you if you don't know them by name you know that who that who yeah. it is or you guess yep, at who exactly. it is exactly and every one of them has a name you know oh, you every do, you one get... of them here has an Perfect. and I and I absolutely um, I will walk through this house and I will address them yeah. um, it's I, I sometimes I feel like I'm just crazy, like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> it's like, hey, I know I'm talking to know. thin air. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, Hank, I'm just in here real quick. I'm gonna vacuum your floors and I'll be out of your hair. You know, right. and that's yeah. It's like, head, okay. head down, earphones in, and just do my thing. <laughs> just go. Yeah, it it it. That's the way. Um, that sometimes that's why I'm saying that's why I even asked you. Do you have anything at home? And I didn't mean it in the bad as in malevolent. 
I'm just right, thinking right. that do they see you, those entities that are there as the head guy, you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah, let's go pay him a little visit. Ah, he's okay. He got home okay. Let's go back. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of a cool thought, you know? I like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, Josh, uh, thank you so much. It has been wonderful to speak to you. Uh, what yeah, for the you. For the uh, people that are listening to the podcast, what is your website where they can get information sure. about Malvern Manor and your books? Sure. So if, if uh, they went on to joshherd.net, okay. they would be able to find uh, – a good portion, like all of my books for sure, and a good portion of my films. And, okay. you know, the rest of my films are now uh, on what's called Viddy Space or The Haunted Space. Um, it's the new network uh, started by Nick Groff and Elizabeth Saint from Ghosts of Shepherdstown. Uh, really? They yeah. Were kind I enough didn't. To, I, when did this start? I wasn't aware of that. What's it called? The um, Haunted Space? The Haunted Dot Space. If you guys check that out, like it is super cool. Like, even like, like right now, we've got Johnny Hauser on his way over here right now. Okay. He's going to do a two-hour live investigation like he does every week. Uh, it's Johnny Hauser versus the Velisca Akis murder house with okay. season one. And then it's Johnny Hauser versus Malvern Manor is season two here. So That is uh, super interesting. I did not know that. <clears throat> what are they doing? Are they hosting what people doing live or, or documentaries? Yeah, so, or, that is great. So it is basically like there are radio shows on there. There are okay. documentary films on there. Like I have four up there uh, right okay, now. Okay, I'm to check those out. Um, it's super, super cool um, service that they're offering here. Um, yeah. And very, very cool stuff. But, yeah, like I said, films and, and live shows and other shows, you know, like just a ton of content. And it's always, always being updated. Excellent. Um, they just now, they just got uh, the deal with uh, Amazon Fire Stick. So if, okay, for those perfect. that own like a Fire Stick can, can get the Viddy Space app. Okay. And they can go on there and check out, you know. The, Absolutely. And that... I know my my films are on there too. So yeah, go check those out. Absolutely. Again, thank you so mm -hmm. much, Josh. It has been absolutely wonderful to talk to you. Yeah, thank you for having me. No, my pleasure and good luck to you. Oh, thank you so much. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Malvern Manor. You know what? I had, where had I, prior to this, prior to thinking of interviewing Josh, I had heard of Malvern Manor. I can't remember now because sometimes I take in so much information shows, content that I lose track sometimes of where I see stuff at. And even then I remember thinking, man, that place is what, but absolutely you know, I wasn't kidding when I said that place, undoubtedly. Well, I haven't gone to do an investigation. I can tell you more than likely that is that is a hot spot. It's got intelligent and residual, but most likely a lot of intelligent manifestations there. Again, the hotel, well, first of all, the length of time it was there. The hotel, the nursing home, people lived and died there. And... Uh, it's not like a hospital where some people, especially like that, those last years where people just go there a week and maybe they pass away, but they live somewhere else. These people, for the length of times, for the years that it was open, there was people there that lived probably a good portion of their lives that they passed away there. I mean, this was home for them. And um, there's an interesting cast of characters there, to put it mildly. You know, we're talking here from what he's describing. People would just, God... Down syndrome, I mean, and you put them in with somebody who's got multiple personality disorder or schizophrenic, sometimes that's, yeah, I know that they medicate them and they give them the things they're supposed to take as far as the people that have mental illness, but I'm telling you, that must have been one crazy place. No pun intended, but yeah, absolutely, undoubtedly, there has got to be uh, intelligent hauntings going on there you should need to check i'm gonna i'm gonna ha i'm gonna check out this new uh uh what is it haunted dot space or spaces i don't i don't even know what it is i want to check out his documentaries absolutely his books see what else is there but anyway guys i hope you like this show i loved talking to josh again uh paranormal researcher after my own heart 
he's an author but he's out there and he's got that first-hand experience and that first-hand proof like I say when you have that moment doesn't mean you capture anything but you know like what happened what he described happened with his uncle that had passed away it's like if nothing how and nothing else paranormal happens to me in my life this will suffice for me to know that there is something that happens to us when we die and that is able to come back and what he said say you know tell everybody I'm okay now but so anyway guys subscribe hit the bell so you get notified whether you're seeing the video on YouTube, you're catching me on podcasts on any of the podcast platforms like iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Pod- Podcasts, Mixcloud. I'm all over the place. Make sure um, that you subscribe so you get notified when I release a new show. Uh, also catch me live streaming on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And again, my true believers, I'm waiting for your stories. I'm getting some of them. Some of them are great. And I hope you keep them coming. Like I said, I'm going to do a show eventually when I get some, you know, like a, some stories that I have like a common thread. I'm going to put a show together about those. I know. And I have, again, a lot of fantastic, interesting guests having to do with some aspect of the paranormal, of the supernatural. And thank you so very much again for being part of my audience and sharing this time with me. Take care. <laughs>